What's going on everybody, I'm Patrick from Powlax and this video is an excerpt from the Man Down Defenses video and in this video we're going to be discussing the box and string and house Man Down Defense. Before we get started, make sure to check out the brand new Powlax and PowlaxMasterCoach.com where you can download and print the playbook PDFs that accompany over 50 Powlax videos by becoming a member and supporting this channel. The new site has been streamlined to make navigating, watching, supporting, and downloading the Powlax content simple and straightforward. We also broadened our membership categories to allow annual and program-wide memberships. Also, make sure to check out the Powlax Teespring store, where you can get Powlax hoodies, t-shirts, tank tops, mugs, even phone cases, and you can customize them to fit your team's colorway. Finally, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow Powlax on all these social media sites. Now let's get back to the video. Now we're gonna discuss the mechanics and the principles of zone man-to-man -man defense. Now, before we get into that, let's talk about why we'd wanna use a zone man-to-man -man defense. First, it's way easier to install than a man-to-man -man rotational defense because players only have to understand I need to defend this space, right? Eventually they'll get the idea where they're gonna need to help a bunch of other players and we're gonna have to backfill with man-to-man -man rotations anyway, but the idea of telling players to defend a specific space because it's dangerous to shoot from is a lot easier at the lower levels than it is to explain how and why rotations are effective. Now, the second reason we're gonna wanna run zones is because like we just said, it defends dangerous space, right? So the most dangerous space, the place we do not want players to shoot from, is the place where we are going to defend. Now, especially at the lower levels, the reason why this works so well is because players don't have the range to extend the field and to extend the zone and create gaps in the zone. The other thing is they also don't have the stick skills to pinpoint feeds inside when a person is pulled out of a zone and then we throw to the opposite side of the zone. The only issue here is a lot of players who begin to think all I have to do is defend this specific space don't actually end up developing their ability to move well and locate and find new players to defend and, and understand kind of why they're defending. So I always lean towards the idea of teaching man-to-man -man first because we're going to backfill the zone with it anyway, but it is more difficult to do. As we talk about the box and one, box and string, and house zone man down defenses, we're gonna discuss zone principles that apply to everything within the box and one, and then the box and string and house. So just because we talked about a specific tactic within the box and one, doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to the box and string and house. We are gonna use zone principles within each to teach each. Now we're gonna move on to the box and string and house zone man down defenses. And as we talk about both, we're going to cover both at once because they're very, very similar. The question is who covers the crease when the ball is on the other side of the field? That's the only true difference. And so we're gonna outline those differences here. In a box and string man down defense, we're gonna use the same box concept as the box and one, where our four players, 1L, 2L, 4L, and 6L, are gonna be in a box covering zones in that area. Now. 5S, instead of having a one zone in the middle, he's actually gonna cover two zones in kind of a skinny line fashion. So he's gonna cover the crease, the five area, and the two area up top when the ball is there. So if the ball swings from M1 to M2, instead of having 1L and 2L pinch, now 5S is gonna come up to play it, which means that 4L and 6L are gonna to have to spider in to cover the crease as well as their men who are here. That's where our skip passes with 1L and 2L having their sticks up into the inside is very important within our zone principles. Now if we wanna run a house zone, now we're actually gonna move this 5S zone out to the perimeter. And when we move the short stick out to the perimeter, we're gonna want him to fill the 4L spot. So now four is actually gonna be an S. You're gonna have a four S. Now that is going to push another player into the middle of the field here, which will pick up our zone in the two spot. So now we are actually going to have a two L spot here. And so the reason why our short stick ends up here is because that's traditionally what the collegiate teams do. For the most part, shooters wanna be up top. And so a less competent player is oftentimes down low because they're not as active as the shooters up top. But depending on the team, their best player could be in this spot and you could be putting your short stick on him. That's just what the teams are doing. But now the mechanics of our house zone are the following. Now, if a player is backside, like here when M1 has the ball, 4S is gonna to have to spider all the way in to cover the crease. 1L should also be in helping on the crease because he's a two. So we've got ball with 2L, 6L is right, 
two L is left, and we've got two twos back here who have to cover the crease. Now, the reason why this is hard to decipher between the box and string and house zone is because as the ball moves from M1 to M2 to M3 to A4, once the ball hits A3, 2L is now a 2. And if 2L is a 2, that means that he has to actually get in to cover the crease in the exact same manner that he would have had to do in the box and string. The only real difference that we'll see here is that 2L will also spider all the way in because he also has to be responsible for the crease when the ball is away. Obviously, 4S is going to be out on the ball if the ball gets swung over there. But so the whole idea and the whole difference between the box and string and the house is where is the short stick and does the player who's defending top center come in to cover the crease by himself or does everyone kind of spider in to cover on the backside when the ball is away from them? Now, what are the positives or negatives of running a box and string versus a house zone? In a box and string, the really effective thing is that we're gonna absolutely cover the crease when the ball is anywhere but up top. We do, it is a little dicey to get the low 4L and 6L players inside on the box and string when the ball is up top, but for the most part, we're covering the crease when the ball is not up top. Second is, as the ball hits top center, a lot of players who are carrying to top center don't recognize the player coming off of the crease player and getting up to the top center. It's just a harder read to make. Whereas for the house zone, because we have five perimeter zones, that's going to allow 4L or 4S and 6L to stay on the pipes because as we build our 2L zone here, that's going to push the 2L zone further down the side as well as the 1L zone, right? So because the 1L and 2L zones are pushed further down the side, that's going to keep our 6L zone closer to the pipe as well as our 4S zone. Obviously, these are gonna intermingle in the middle a little bit more, and you can take a look at the PDF diagram for that. The first zone principle that we have is defend the dangerous, and this is a huge one. This is the entire point of the zone. We want to defend players based on how dangerous they are. Now, a player is dangerous based on the following things. First is, do they have the ball? If they have the ball, they're way more dangerous than a player who doesn't have the ball. The next thing is their proximity in relation to the goal. If they're close to the goal with the ball, they're very, very dangerous. If they have the ball, but they're way away from the goal, we really don't mind. We can hold our zone in here because if, they, if we give up shots that are far away, our goalie will make those saves. The second principle we have is communication. And we are gonna communicate our positions on the field, how that relates to the ball, as well as any type of action that we are doing. Now, as far as it goes in terms of our relationship to the player who's defending the ball, we're gonna use the same ideas as we did with the man-to-man, -man, where the LSM is ball because M1 has the ball. Now, D1 is to the left of the LSM, which makes him left. D2 is to the right of the LSM, which makes him right. And D3 is two because he's at least two passes away. He's two zones away. DM1, we're gonna give inside. He is covering up inside. Our next two principles are bungee back and show and slow play. And in order to outline what that is, we're gonna have the offense just make two simple passes. They're gonna pass from M1 to M2 and then from M2 to M3 and within those two passes we are gonna see the ideas of bungee back and show and slow play. So as we begin this the LSM is on ball and the ball is gonna be passed from M1 to M2. Now as the LSM extends out to play M1 once the ball moves out of his zone or out of this spot he needs to recover back and bungee back into the center of his zone. Now, that's what bungee back means. If any player ever gets pulled to the edge of their zone, once the ball leaves that zone, they pass the ball off to somebody else or the ball is passed out of that location, they have to bungee back to the center of their zone towards the middle of the field so that they have the best angle possible to re-pick up a new player. Now, within this example, as the LSM bungees back, when M2 has the ball, he still kind of needs to show into this space because M2 stepping into the gap between the LSM and D1 and depending on what happens prior to that, we don't know which player should pick it up because if M2 just has the ball and steps into the middle, they're both gonna have to pinch and squeeze towards this player because M2 is likely to go into either of their zones. Now, as M1 throws the ball to M2 and LSM is bungeeing back, D1 wants to show towards M2 
and make it look like he is going to move out to play him. So it need, we need to make it look like we're going to rotate. Now, as he shows, this should make M2 hesitate a bit and perhaps pass the ball to M3. Now, as he shows, this is also a slow play. D1 is not gonna just run out and go play him. He's going to sit in space where the offensive player thinks he might rotate, and then it's gonna cause the offensive player to hesitate, and then once the ball moves again, he is also going to bungee back to get to M3. Now, as these two passes happened, notice that now we have the LSM who is in the middle of the field here, D1 is now extended here. All of the other players are gonna make the same type of movements, right? So DM1 is gonna kinda of be ball side at first, then as the ball swings, he's going to move like that. D2, same idea. He'll be kind of up in here, maybe the M1's gonna kinda of come down, then as the ball moves, he's gonna make this type of movement. Then D3, is gonna do the same thing. At first, he should be in on the back of A2, and now as the ball moves, he is going to come out and be ready to take the next pass when A3 possibly gets it. And now, as you'll see, every player made the same type of movement, and that's how we want our zone to work. All of the players are gonna maintain their shape, and as the ball moves around the perimeter of the field, they're gonna maintain their positive box in one shape so that their entire group goes from here to here, to here. So they're all connected. You can think of them as if they're on strings where as the ball moves, if the new player who's playing the ball moves out some, everyone else has to come in and backfill behind them in that formation. Now we're gonna pick up the zone principles when we get to the box and string and house, but now we're gonna go over how it works when our zone has to rotate. Now in order to outline more man down defense zone principles like we began to in the box and one section of this video, we are gonna outline two plays each for a box and string as well as a house zone to show you some of the other elements of our zone man down defenses. The first play we're gonna have is a box and string versus that twist play that we had when we talked about the box and one. And so the first thing we're gonna have is M1's gonna have the ball. The LSM is gonna move out to play M1. Now, as M1 carries to the middle of the field here and M2 shallow cuts underneath the LSM, now when M1 gets to the two spot, DM1's gonna have to move up to play them. And so any time a player carries from one zone to another, we're gonna to want to do a pass. And so whichever player is in the zone that is accepting the player must communicate a pass, and they're gonna yell, pass. And as a player hears pass, they are gonna bungee back like we talked about within the box and one video. And so as M1 carries to the middle of the field, the LSM is going to maintain his coverage of M1, and then he should hear DM1 yell, pass and DM1 is now going to approach M1 and once the LSM hears pass he is going to immediately get back and bungee back to the middle of his zone and then rematch up with whoever else is on that zone. Now anytime that we are going to be passing off one player to another we are risking that exchange right so as one player falls off and another player moves out to play that player we're going to want to make sure those players do two separate things. First the players have to get big they want to be big in their zone so they deter the offensive player from moving in the gaps between both zones right so if a player kind of is just kind of mediocrely standing there kind of sideways here like this you know the offensive player is not really going to be intimidated to maybe come through that zone and so by getting big we should deter the offensive player now the second thing that they have to do and this is huge you have to do this they have to break down you cannot run out in an offensive player and not be in a position where you can move your body in any which way like if I'm running this way and you're running at me if I don't stop moving towards you and you make a move to the side, you're gonna go right past me. So what I need to do is I need to break down, I need to obviously get low, chop my feet like I would, we'll go over that in the individual play section, but you gotta make sure that you are able to react to the player that is coming at you and that's your breakdown. The next zone principle that we have works for everybody on the defense and we're gonna show it very truly in the adjacent left and right position. So, as we end our twist, or even if they're just in a 3-3 passing the ball around, if we're in our box and string and the ball is top center, DM1 has to move out to play the ball. Now, in that event, we're giving up a 3v2 on the lower half of the field. And so D2 and D3 are gonna have to cover inside with A2. Now, if A2 
circles up behind DM1, that's gonna bring D2 or D3 way inside of the defense. And in that situation, this skip pass through to A1 or through to A3 is gonna be there a lot of the time. The only thing that's gonna keep that from happening if this is the, the scenario that we choose is D1 and the LSM have to have their sticks up in passing lanes and be ready and expect to knock the, the ball down. They have to get their sticks up in passing lanes so that the vision of the feeder M2 up top thinks that that lane is closed. It's not even necessarily the idea that we're gonna knock down all the passes. It's just the fact that, let's say, M1 has the ball, the ball's passed to M2. As the LSM's getting back in, his stick has to be up in that passing lane so that when M2 looks through to A1, he is going to see a stick, not a lane. Now we're gonna use the house zone to show how we wanna make sure our players are playing the crease and the piped. And the key is, we never wanna leave the crease open or either pipe open. We wanna make sure we're passing in the event that we're, people are trying to carry us off of a pipe. So in this example, A1 passes the ball to A3. Now as the ball moves from this side of the field to the opposite side of the field, that's going to mean that the LSM who's helping on the crease is going to have to pass off to D1. So D3 will be the, he'll maintain his crease play, but D1 will now come in. Now we are going to have the offense run a four man side wheel. So A3 is gonna carry up, M1 is gonna to fade to top center, M2 is going to cut the middle, and A2 is going to come out to this pipe. Now, as this happens, we do not want D2 coming high up and getting up the hash because goals happen on the pipes. Like the pipes are extremely deadly. We would rather give up a shot from here than a shot from here. And so as A3 carries up the wing, we wanna make sure that the LSM knows that even though his man is moving to the center and he might come this way, he needs to get in and pass off A3 as quickly as possible so that D2 can come up and then immediately get right back to A2 because A2 is the most dangerous player. We do not want to allow anyone to pull us off of the pipes. And the play you'll see a ton, especially at the high school levels, is you'll see two players here who are kind of playing cat and mouse with D2 we want D2 to cover the player who is near the pipe. We want the LSM to cover the player who is on the wing. In the event that the offense makes our house zone or our box and string rotate, we're gonna rotate with five players, not usually four. It's possible with four in a box and string, but for the most part, we're gonna rotate five because that's just the more intuitive way to do it for most players. Now, in order to show you how we're gonna do that, we're gonna use one of my favorite man up plays, which is a four man top wheel. So. The ball's gonna swing from M1 to A3 and back up to M1. Now, as M1 catches the ball, he's gonna carry to top center. M2 is going to fade to top left. M3 is going to cut the middle to the crease. And then A2 is going to float out behind M1 and become the new top right position. Now, for our defense in our house zone, the LSM is going to stay with M1 on his carry until he is passed by D3. Once D3 decides to pass M1, now the LSM has to bungee back. Now the question is, does he get back in time or do we have to rotate D2 up? So let's say that the pass comes back to A2 and D2 says he's gotta rotate. Now we're gonna rotate with five players. That means everyone is going to switch and rotate to the next possible spot. D2 rotates up and to the top right zone DM1 is gonna rotate in and over to the six zone. D1 is gonna rotate and cover the crease here and actually become the four zone. Then D3, once the ball's passed back, is going to recover to the one zone. And the LSM, who was originally carried to top center, is going to bungee back kinda to the three to see if he can get to A2, but then he will end up filling the two zone. So in the same way the four man rotated four in a box, this is gonna rotate five in almost a pentagon style. 
In this first clip, we're going to give a visual representation of what a house zone or box and string zone is going to look like. Now, this is one of the only clips I could find that actually resembles a box and string man down defense, and you'll notice it because the player in the two zone does a great job of getting right back to the crease anytime the ball moves, even to the top left or top right zones. As we begin the clip, we have the 1L zone, 3L zone, 4S zone, and 6L zone. Now our final zone is either going to be a 2L zone, which is this player here, and that will create our house zone, or it will be a 2-5 string zone, which is going to be elongated to cover the crease, which shows that this player is going to defend the player up top when the ball is there, but any other time he will be in defending the player on the crease. In this clip, Notre Dame is gonna swing the ball, then they're gonna run a four-man side wheel, swing the ball, and then run a nice little twist on the left side. Now, as the ball hits top left, they run their four-man side wheel, and I want you to keep your eye on the player in the 2-5 L zone, and notice how once he recognizes that the player is going to carry to top center. He lets the crease player go and then defends and then passes off the player who is cutting from top center so that he can meet the ball carrier as he hits up top. Then once the ball begins to swing again, notice how anytime the ball is away from the top center player, even when it's just top left or top right, he is immediately back in trying to defend the crease player. Then once the ball hits bottom left, this player carries up over a shallow cut and the two players do a great job of just passing off this carry shallow cut. The ball is passed up top to top right, back to top center to top left. The ball is skipped through to the top right shooter who takes a nice shot, misses wide, and by this time the man up is over. In this clip, we're going to watch Virginia running their house zone that was very successful during the NCAA tournament in 2019. Now, as Maryland is swinging the ball, you'll notice that this player is going to cut all the way to the crease. They're going to swing the ball around, and notice how far this player gets in to cover the crease when the ball is on the backside. That is what we need anytime we're trying to run a house. It doesn't matter which zone the players are in. If there is a player on the crease and the ball is on the opposite side of you, you are spidered all the way into the crease to cover just like this. In this clip of Penn State's house zone versus Michigan, we're going to focus in on how Penn State plays in order to keep their defensemen on the pipes. As the ball swings around the field, you're going to notice that this top center player is going to cut all the way through X. This is something that a lot of high school teams love to do. They swing the ball, they add another player at X that's going to overload, so they're going to carry up the right hash and then throw back to this player. Now notice how as the short stick gets carried up the hash, the player in the 4L zone spiders over and shows in order to allow the 6S zone to get right back. This is a great job of showing and slow playing in order to allow the 6S zone to bungee back. Also, this player should be commended for recognizing that one player tried to play two and covering up the wing side of the 6S zone. As play continues, the ball swings all the way back to bottom right and this player carries up over a shallow cut like we saw in the last example. Now notice how as he carries up, the player passes off very quickly to allow for the 6S zone to stay as close to the pipe as possible. The ball is passed up top and then skipped through from top center to bottom left. Penn State does a great job of bungeeing back and taking care of this threat. The ball's passed from back left to back right, and then up top to top center, and this player takes a nice step down, but misses wide and the man-up opportunity is over. In this clip, we're going to show how Virginia likes to apply pressure once they're pulled to one side of the zone and to rotate fully behind them after they've made that decision. As Robert Morris swings the ball up top and starts to play cat and mouse with the two zone, notice that as the ball hits top right, the player in the two zone just moves out to take him, the player in the one zone moves up to take the pass, and then everybody rotates behind them very quickly so that they can then resettle back in their house zone. In the event that we get pulled out of our zone, we want to make sure that everyone is rotating quickly and efficiently behind us. In this example, Virginia is going to stay with carry shallow cuts that Maryland runs on the wings because they know that it is coming and so that they can apply pressure to Maryland as they are running their simple carry shallow cut motions. On the original carry, this they pass off pretty easily as they swing the ball. Now once the ball hits back left, on this carry, Virginia is actually going to stay with the carry and the shallow cut. The ball moves up top to side right, back to up top, back to side right, and we get a nice little shot. As the ball is restarted, the ball moves from top left to top center to top right to bottom right, and on this carry shallow cut, they decide to just pass this off. Now the key here is that if a team is going to be using carry shallow cuts that you know players are going to be entering and exiting from specific zones, you do have the ability to allow your players to stay in hands if you know the rotation is going to refill your zones. Now we are going to show a bunch of zone man down defensive highlights to outline exactly how we want our players to play individually within these zone man down defensive concepts. 
In this section, we're going to outline what players should be cognizant of as they are playing within a man down defensive zone. We're going to go over the player who is playing the ball, the adjacents, as well as the twos defending the crease and the perimeter so that we get an overall understanding of how we want to operate within a man down defensive zone defense. The first thing we must do is we must acknowledge the edges of our zone. As we do that, we want to make sure that we understand exactly where we're going to break down and extend to, as well as how far we may be able to throw our, our poke check or our slap check out to get on the hands of the offensive player. Next thing we want to make sure we do is we acknowledge any players who we may want to extend out a little farther to. If a certain team has a specific shooter that we want to make sure that we get into the hands of, we may need to extend out a little bit further based on the personnel of the team we are playing. In the event that a ball carrier comes into our zone, Zone, whether that be a player carrying into our zone or having the ball passed into our zone, we want to make sure that we approach the player with the ball and break down so that if the player decides to dodge, we can easily push them away. If a part of our game plan is to put some pressure on that player, that's fine as long as everything in the back end makes sense and the other players know to expect it. But if we're just in our zone, we want to make sure that we guard the dangerous space and do not overextend. Next, we must be cognizant of the fact that when the ball moves, whether it be carried into another zone or it be passed out of our zone, that we have to bungee back. And as we bungee back, we want to make sure we look and locate the middle of the field first to see if we need to help anything, and we go inside out. So our eyes need to hit the inside first and then turn to play anyone who is outside. Next, while we are in our zone, if we are not able to actually put our stick on the offensive player, we want to make sure that our sticks are up in passing lanes and we are trying to knock down the ball. In the event that we are playing in a zone that is adjacent to the ball carrier, we want to make sure that we are shading towards the ball. So we want to be in the ball side section of our zone. This ensures that our zone maintains its shape and if the ball carrier decides to carry towards us, we are ready to pick him up as needed. Next, we want to make sure that we are using the V to C stance. This stance basically means that if we point our arms out to the ball carrier as well as to the player who is outside of our zone, our arms are going to make a V which allows us to see the ball carrier as well as the player who is near our zone. Once we're in our V to C stance, we want to make sure that we have our sticks up and they are in passing lanes. Because we are in an adjacent zone, we are one of the best deterrents to skip passes from the ball carrier through the defense. In the event that the ball carrier carries into our zone, we want to make sure we use the pass call to alert the player who was on ball in the other zone to let the ball go so that they can bungee back into their zone. In the event that the ball carrier pulls the defenseman in the adjacent zone to the opposite side of their zone, the zone that's away from us, and then throws back to the opposite side of the zone and we deem it necessary to rotate, we must communicate the rotation so that everyone else in the defense understands that they will snap into position once we decide that the rotation is a necessity. If we are defending a zone that is two passes away from the ball carrier, we want to make sure that we are shading towards the ball, which means we are coming in towards the crease. This is going to put us in a better position to cover any kind of passes that happen so we can get to either side of our zone once the ball moves once or twice. It also puts us in a better position to rotate if the need arises. Next, we want to make sure that we are in a sideways stance. This isn't always possible. We want to make sure that we can see the ball carrier as well as players who are on the far ends of our zone. Zone. Once we have our sideways stance, we need to make sure that we are locating at least two players. Sometimes this is a player on the crease, which we will spider in really far to cover, or it could be two players on the outside of the field, and we are going to stay even so that we could play either of them depending on the direction that the ball is thrown. Finally, if one of these players decides to cut to the crease, we want to make sure that we stay with the cutter until they leave our zone. And if they do leave our zone, we need to make sure that we communicate the cut so that the next zone will pick them up. When we are defending a zone on the crease, the first thing we want to do is try to stay ball side. This will allow us to get to any dodges that kind of come through and into our zone. If we're not ball side, it allows the player who is on the crease to seal us off so that we can't help the next zone. In the event that we cannot be ball side, we must at least have our stick on the back of the player who is in the crease zone. If the player who is on the crease pops to the perimeter, we must communicate that the player is leaving the crease so that one of the players in the perimeter zones will pick up the player who left the crease. Next, if a player comes to the crease, we need to make sure that we pick up that player. If we are defending a zone that is on the pipes, we want to make sure that we do not move too far to X to play the ball. If we do, it's going to force a really easy rotation that we do not want to have happen. Next, 
We want to avoid getting pulled upfield to the wings. We want to stay on the pipes. The bottom line is that a shot eight yards out on the wing is less deadly than a shot with a player who is curling the crease who is now three yards away from the goal. When we are defending zones on the pipes, that is our main responsibility. Do not allow players to have easy goals by standing on the pipes. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Definitely let me know what you guys thought down in the comments section. I hope that after watching this, you feel more competent about how you understand man down defense and feel that you can make the best decision for your team. Make sure to check out the brand new PallaxMasterCoach.com where you can now watch, support, and download all of the Palax content. We're kind of getting away from the Patreon third-party stuff. I built an entire website dedicated to all of the Palax content that you can now actually support for $5 a month and download all of the content in a much easier to navigate and view way. So definitely check out PallaxMasterCoach.com. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, check out the Palax Teespring store where you can buy a bunch of Palax merch and show your support in your local community. Finally, make sure to follow Palax on all types of social media. We've got a TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. We like to post at least once a day, maybe twice. Sometimes we kind of miss a day here or there either way. But so make sure to follow us on all of social media to stay involved. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.